So I'm going to assume that at least one person watch, who will watch this video has never heard of this book. And so I'm going to say a few words about it for anyone who's never heard of it. And then I'm going to go into some things that I, uh, that I want to say about it at this point. I am uh, about a third into uh, the Wade Real Analysis book. If you watch any other videos in my channel, you'll, you'll see a whole playlist of all, all those uh, videos. So I'm about a third in. And so I have a few things that I want to say about Rudin given that I have uh, skimmed or read uh, about half the book by now, on and off at different times, uh, to reference things. So, for, for the people who've never heard of this book, uh, Rudin is, um, is really considered to be like a, a rite of passage in some way for, for, uh, for pure mathematics for undergraduates. Uh, some people criticize it and consider it more like a hazing. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if... Uh, you, uh, you'll understand what hazing is, but it's like, you want to get into this group, uh, we're going to make you do things that are, are not nice, just to, you, you, we, want, we wanted you to prove to us that you really belong in this group. <clears throat> and so that's, I think, what hazing is. So, but to others, I think it's, it's, you know, it's a real thing, it's a real analysis book, so if you were talking to somebody and they asked you, oh, what, what, did you uh, what book did you use for studying? Uh, you didn't use uh, Joey's... Uh, Joey's a pizza making and analysis book. You actually use Rudin and people would say, oh wow, that's great. Yeah, we did like most of the book. Oh wow, that's that's great. Uh, Rudin passed uh, away in 2010. Uh, and so I'm not sure that this book will ever be updated, although it has happened before that a publisher will uh, take a book and add a person. I think that happened to Royden. Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, that also happened to one of the number theory books, uh, to Niven. Uh, so that has happened, and it could happen with Rudin that McGraw Hill uh, finds somebody to come in and uh, revamp the book. Uh, the book is definitely a classic, and so I'll have a lot to say. So the, the, the basic thing that I have to say is by now that I've read a little bit of analysis, you can see some con ways that concept sequence, sequencing can happen. Uh, so people are going to go, the, the, the authors, you know, and I've shown other analysis books in here since I'm working on my analysis shelf, <laughs> slowly but surely, uh, will do a, a various a attacks on the subject. Sometimes they'll just do, uh, talk about the real number system. This is what uh, Bardo and Sherbert does. Uh, this is uh, what Wade does to, sort, to a certain extent. Uh, so... Start with the real number system, going to limits, continuity, differentiation, integration. Those are the first chapter, five chapters in Wade. Uh, then, uh, depending on the book, they'll talk about some, a little bit about complex functions. They'll talk a little bit about ver vector functions. Uh, they'll use point set topology in different ways. Uh, they all use sequences and power series, but in different places. Um, and then they'll, some will go into the Lebesgue integral. And some, like Bardo and Sherbert, will actually go into the generalized Riemann integral, which, according to Bardo and Sherbert, is uh, really more a generalized way that has a subset, the uh, Riemann and Lebesgue. So those are the topics. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, what I would call the challenges and frustration with baby rooting, which I think is going to be the title of this video. Uh, I really like the deep treatment of elementary real and complex analysis. I mean, and that's why the book is titled Mathematical Analysis and Now Real Analysis, because it really encompasses real, complex, vector, uh, multidimensional, R to the N, uh, so n-dimensional uh, real space. Yeah, it's, it's really, really wide in its coverage. It has many instructive examples, and I, I have a couple of pages that I have marked and I'll go to them uh, to show you, folks. Uh, but I think, and, and I give both of, the, both of those points a plus. The, the zero, if I give a plus for something, or a zero or a minus, the zero, which kind of balances out into positives and negatives that tend to zero, is that the, the use of points of topology in this book for proofs is really creative. Uh, but the connection between points of topology concepts and the approachable examples, to me, as a noob, are missing. Uh, and I'll, I'll be looking into that later as I read more analysis. Um, so what I think the book is missing is that 
I, I think it's great that the book, when you go through it, it'll flip back and forth between real, complex, vector, uh, it'll go R to the N on you, it'll talk about things like, well, this is an algebra, um, and I'll mention all those examples because I have the page numbers uh, for them, and that really assumes that you know the subject really well. I mean, it, that's typically what happens. Somebody builds up the subject, and then you can go around different subjects. This has already been like a, you were led into. Uh, so I believe, you know, the book has zero figures, so the book could use um, many figures, you know, 50. Uh, it could use, I think, about 100 pages of introductory material that it doesn't have. Uh, and again, that's just my opinion. People may disagree with me. Uh, and I would say about another 100 pages of uh, explanations for babies like myself. Uh, yeah, explanations for babies. And more examples, even though, to be fair to the book, it's got some great examples, really good examples. As a matter of fact, it not all, the, I think the two main things that keep me coming back to this book are it covers the subject very deeply and very well, and it's got some awesome examples. Awesome examples. The proofs are too succinct, too brief for my taste because I'm a baby, but uh, yeah, so I would also uh, like the book to have some expansion of the proofs. Somebody can out there may have written a, a book like that. I have not seen it and I've looked really hard, looked really, really hard for uh, a, a Rudin-like book. It's as deep, as good as Rudin, but has figures, has explanations. Uh, weight is, is in that direction, but not really because weight is very linear. It just, you know, it's all real analysis. There's no complex uh, there's some vector later on, but it's really it's real analysis and the title says it all it is not mathematical analysis like this book All right, so I really don't have any other book uh, That ties together so many important concepts in mathematical analysis uh, with the many uh, instructional examples uh, I just don't and however terse the proofs are are correct So, you know, you got to give them to that you know, he and uh, it's clear that Rudin really understood the material. He wrote two other books. This is Baby Rudin. There's Papa Rudin, which I also have. I'm not going to show because I, I just have it. But I'm, I'm going to read it years from now if I ever do. And then Grandpa Rudin is functional analysis. So Papa Rudin is uh, real and complex analysis for first year grad students. And functional analysis is a second year graduate book. Uh, so, and I don't foresee changing my mind about Rudin. By now, I've looked at the book so much, at least for the first um, chapters, anything except the last three. I have not looked at functions of several variables, differential forms, or Lebesgue theory. But everything else, I have looked at. I can almost recognize the page because I've tried to read some things uh, many times. So, just to give you a, uh, a, a little taste, you know, I'll go to a couple of pages. So, when you go to page 32 of the book, um, I mean, I love this in the sense that it tells me a lot about point set topology. A neighborhood, a limit point, uh, a close interval, um, an interior point, whether something is open or closed, a complement, which I, I do understand, whether something is perfect, bounded, dense, good stuff. It would have been great if, if the book had... Uh, several examples. It's got a really nice table, and it actually does have a few, uh, but I don't know. I'm a baby. I need to be babied. That's just my opinion. Uh, so then if we go, say for example, to page 63, this paragraph is fantastic. This is Rudin at, at his best, where he explains how when you put an extra square in here for log log n, uh, you get a different, you get some, you get, you don't get divergence, right? So, but the difference between diverging and not diverging is not crystal clear. It depends on the situation, and he has a really good example to explain it. I, I love this paragraph. When I read this, I was like, okay, clearly you are the man. Thank you. Uh, then, let's see, let's go to page 73. So on page 73, he's got an example of how when you square 
two series, uh, you may get divergence, even though the series by itself converges. Very nice, very well laid out. Yeah, great example, very insightful. Uh, then, let me see, I go to page 94. If we go to page 94, we have discontinuity examples. Great discontinuity examples. This is, this is awesome. I love this. Uh, then if we go to page 88, this is a very interesting instance because Wade keeps using the symbol of phi for a function. But I think in some cases, I believe, and I have to go back and be careful with what I'm saying because I could be wrong, he's using it in this context, which is a coordinate function. I had never heard of this term. I looked it up, and really, it is what it says it does. It, you put in the vector x to the coordinate function, and it gives you the scalar value of that function. So that was pretty cool. I had not, I've not seen this in any other book. Uh, then if we turn to uh, page 132, which I paced through before uh, by chance, I guess the book flips on it. It's got a physical example. Very nice. This is great. So Rudin has some great examples. Uh, having done physics, I totally love this. Uh, then page 144. On page four, uh, 144, he talks about limit flips using sequences. Great examples. This is crystal clear. Better than Wade. Actually, when I started reading the concept in Wade, I was like, ah, I sort of get it, but I gotta... Let's see what Rudin says. Oh, wow, look at this. Great, great stuff. Perfectly explained. Uh, and then last, but it's one of the ones that I, I personally would have liked uh, to get a little more, because I'm a baby, is... Uh, the whole thing of going into what is an algebra. It's a topic that I have looked up before many times because I find it interesting uh, and I don't fully understand it. It feels, it seems to me like it, you're describing what a group is and that constitutes an algebra. I would have loved a paragraph in front of here saying, all right, baby, this is what I mean and then go into it. But I mean, even though it's a criticism of the book, it, this is Rudin. This is what why Rudin matters. It's because he'll go that deep on you and say, hey, look at this, and let's keep going on that subject. So overall, that's my summary. Uh, after having read a third of, of Wade and skimmed or, and or read about half of Rudin, I would like someday to take the time to go through this book it, a lot more carefully, but I don't know if it'll happen. But at this point, that's what I have to say about it.